Hey everyone, how are all of you doing? Connor Moriarty here and welcome to Lightroom 101, the comprehensive guide and tutorial to everything there is Lightroom. Today you're tuning in to episode number three where we're going to be talking about how to export and how to print your images. We all know it doesn't really matter how good your photos are if you don't know how to export, print, and share them. So I'm going to show you everything you need to know about that. So obviously, if this is episode three, that means there's an episode one and two as well. So for those of you who haven't seen those, I'm going to go ahead and link them down in the description. Go back, check those out. You're definitely going to love them. In episode one, I taught you how to import and organize all your photos. And in episode two, I opened up the develop module and showed you everything you need to know about editing in Lightroom. So that leaves us to episode number three, where we have our final images and we're ready to print them and export them. Finally, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I make it a real big point to answer every single comment on every single one of my videos, so if anything's unclear or if you have any questions about anything I teach you guys, go ahead and leave those questions below. I'll answer every single one of them. Anyways, I've gone ahead and opened up a few photos from a fun little shoot I did a while back in the studio. Now all the photos are edited and ready to go. I have about five, six of them, I think six of them here, so let's get started. So first I'm gonna start by talking about exporting because I feel like that's what most of you are gonna to wanna to do and what most of you will do the most. So you're gonna start off by selecting all your images. I've selected the five or six that I wanna export and go up to File, Export. Now that'll open this window here and I'll go ahead and I'll close down all these little tabs to simplify it for us as we go into each one of them individually. The first tab you're gonna see is Export Location and this is a real simple tab. All you're choosing here is when you export your photos, where they're going to go. So the first thing first you're gonna do is go to choose your overall folder where this is gonna go. And I like to export everything to my desktop here and I press choose. And then I like to check this button that says put in subfolder. And basically what this means is that wherever you choose to export, it's gonna put a separate folder where you're choosing to export it, and you can choose to title that wherever you want. Now I just got done with a Halloween photo shoot, but this one clearly isn't a Halloween photo shoot. So let me just retitle this one real quick, and I'll just title it Studio Shoot. And it's as simple as that, everyone. Now if you just wanted to ex export it to a desktop or a folder that you already have made, just unclick that button there, and it will export it exactly where you want it to. But for me right now, I'm gonna put it in that subfolder. Next up is file naming. Now this right here is going to be a good test for how many of you have seen my other episodes because in episode one I taught you all how to rename all your photos to a much more efficient way of naming. So all of your photos should already be named exactly how you want them to and if that's the case ignore this tab. But for those of you who skip that part just go ahead click the rename button and you can go over here to this menu and you have quite a few different options for what you want to do. You can just do a custom name and type something in. So if I just wanted to do photo shoot again, I could do that and all my photos would be renamed photo shoot and then each one would have a number next to it like a sequence number. You can also go back to this menu and go to edit. And as you can see, this will just bring up the same dialog box with the same options for naming your files that we saw in episode one. So you can basically rename your files the exact same way that you did before. I've already shown you guys how to do that, so go check it out in episode one. So since we've already renamed all these photos to what I want them to, I'm gonna unclick that and go ahead to the next one. Now we're not working with video today, so I'm gonna skip over that. I never really work with video in Lightroom, so I'm not gonna waste time showing you that one. File settings here. This is where you just pick some of the preliminary settings that you're gonna set for your photo. So first things first, you're gonna choose the image format for your photos. Now I always do JPEG. You can do whatever, whatever other file format you would like. JPEG is perfect for making smaller file sizes that to share with people on the internet, on social media, email, whatever it might be. But if you wanna save those bigger files for editing, go ahead and pick PSD or TIFF or whatever you'd like. For now, we're just gonna stick with JPEG. Now, if you might be sending these out to clients and you know they're gonna be viewing them on a different screen, you can mess around with this color space, but for the most part, you're never gonna change that, so don't worry about that one. Finally, you can adjust the quality of your image. Now this is gonna directly affect your file size. So obviously the bigger the quality, the bigger the file size. So if we have it at 100% here, then your file size is gonna be quite large. But if you take it down to say 75%, it might cut that photo size in half. So if you're sending these over email, that might be a good idea. But for me, I always love my photos as big as they can be because I do not wanna lose any information, any clarity. 
uh, any detail in any of my shots. So I keep it keep it at 100. I would suggest you do the same. But like I said, if you're going to email them and you want the file sizes a little smaller, go ahead and knock it down a little bit. Next up, let's move to image sizing. And in this tab, you're going to adjust the resolution of the file as well as how big it is. So when you first open this, yours will probably be set to width and height. And here, as you can see, you can choose how many pixels you would like all of your photos wide and high. You can also change it to inches or centimeters if you'd like and manually change how big you want your file to be. Here you can see it says that it's 25.4 by 17.3 centimeters. But say you're exporting a group of images, a batch of images, some of them are horizontal, some of them are vertical, this wouldn't make any sense to do because all of your orientations are totally different. So that's why I like to go in this menu and select long edge. And basically what this means is you're telling the computer or the software that the long edge of every single photo, no matter if it's horizontal or vertical, is gonna be this long. Now I like to do it in pixels. And a good friend of mine one day told me that the ideal pixel count for the long edge of a photo for the web, for the internet, is 2048 pixels. Now, I don't know how accurate this is. This is typically a pretty large file, but like I said, I like my files to be large, and especially on my website, I want them represented big and in their best format. So I'd recommend going with that, but if you're just posting a photo to Instagram or Twitter or something like that, you can go ahead and knock that down to 1,000, even 500 pixels if you really wanted to get small. Finally, resolution. I would definitely recommend keeping your resolution at 300 pixels per inch no matter what. I just think that's a fantastic option, and I've tried a lot of different resolutions, and out of everything, that is the best result that I have found. Next up, we have a tab called Output Sharpening. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. If you click this button, you're going to be working on sharpening your JPEGs as you export them. Now, I'm not going to talk about this for too long, but basically you can change here whether you want to sharpen for a screen, for matte paper, for glossy paper, the amount that you want to do it. But in my opinion, you've already edited all your images. If you wanted to sharpen them, you would have sharpened them when we were editing in episode number two. So for the most part, I have never touched this tab, and I recommend you leave it alone as well. But obviously, it's there if you need it. Next up, we have the metadata tab. Now, just like the renaming photos tab, this is going to test all of you to see how many of you actually tuned in for episode one, because I talked all about metadata in episode number one. So all of your photos should already have all the metadata and be ready to go. But what this is kind of cool for is you can choose how much of the metadata to export to your photos. So for example, say you take an iPhone photo that has the location geo tag tagged to every single one of your photos. If you're publishing them to the web and you maybe don't want everybody to know where you live or where you've been traveling, go ahead, click this menu, and say copyright and contact info only. If you check that, then the only metadata that will be on the files is your copyright information and there will be no, nothing like geotags or anything like that. Next up is a really cool tab, and that's all about watermarking. Now, a lot of you probably know what watermarking is. Now, if you're giving all these photos to a client to proof, for example, or if I'm giving all these photos to this model, I might want to watermark my images so there's no risk of them going ahead and selling them on their own or printing them on my own. I trust this model. She's fantastic. But let's just say I wanted to. I click that button here and open up this menu here. As you can see, I've already set up a watermark for myself. But here, you can go to Simple Copyright Watermarks or you can go to Edit Watermarks. And it will open up this window here. And all of this is very self-explanatory. If any, if any of you know how to use Microsoft Word, you know how to use this. You can type in what you want your watermark to say here. You can change your font, your style, the alignment. You can change how, um, what the opacity is of it, how offset it is, changing all the positions of it, where the anchor point is. You can change it all. You can even upload a graphic, maybe your logo to it. And when you do this, every single one of the photos that you export will be exported with this watermark right on top of it. Now, if you really like that watermark and you want to save it for future use, just go up here to this menu and save, save current settings as new preset. Just select that and you can title it whatever you'd like and press create. Now, we're not going to watermark these images because I'm going to put them on my Instagram and Facebook, but that's how you do it. Finally, post-processing. This is just a simple little tab that, again, I've never really touched and I don't suggest you really touch it at all either unless you want to use it for specific circumstances, but here you can choose 
when after the photos are done processing and exporting, it can pull them up in Finder and show them in Finder. It can open them up in Photoshop, or you can choose to open them up in another application. But I know exactly where my images are going, so I know exactly how to find them once they're done. Finally, once you're all done making all these adjustments to your export settings, if you really like what you did and you think that you're going to be using these same settings going forward in the future, come over here to this dialog window and press Add. And this is basically allowing you to save all these settings presets. So I'm just going to title it something stupid, just example. And I'll put it in the folder, User Presets. And when you create it, it's right there. So anytime you export photos for now on in Lightroom, though all those settings are going to be right here for you to choose and set up very quickly so you don't have to do all of this manually again. Now, I know some of this can get pretty technical and boring. Let me know if you have any questions about it, please. I'll be sure to answer them. But once you're all done, go ahead and hit Export here. You can see the bar working there. And that's it, guys. You're all done. So now you can go ahead and open up all your photos in your finder, cycle through them, see how they look, and then go ahead and share them. All right, so now that we've exported our images, let's say you want to print your images. Guys, I love printing my images. I don't think your photography is complete until you're holding them in your hand, and it's a tangible product that you can put your hands on, so I just absolutely love printing. If you watch my other videos, my gear videos, you can see that I own a great Canon printer myself, and I love to print all the time. So. We have the same photos here that we selected, and say I wanted to go ahead and print one. I can hit Command P to go to the print module, or I can just take my cursor over here to print. You can go ahead and click that, and I'll go ahead and open this window here. Now there are a lot of other programs that are better at printing than Lightroom. For, for example, Photoshop definitely gives you tons more options for customizing exactly how you want to print your photo, but all of our photos are already here living in Lightroom, so why not use it and why not print from here? So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Page Setup down here, and that'll go ahead and open this window. Here, you're just going to choose what printer you're formatting for. So I have my Canon Pro Series here. You can change your orientation. Right now, we're, we have a horizontal photo, so we're going to choose the horizontal orientation. And finally, you can choose the paper size. So you can open up this menu. You can choose something simple by an 8x10 or even a US letter. But I usually do manage custom sizes. And when I do this, I can type in exactly what the size of my paper is that I'm going to be printing with. In this case, I'm going to be printing with 11 by 14 inch paper. If you know that you're going to print with this size paper a lot in the future, go ahead and press the plus button here and you can save that page setup preset. Hit OK. And that's the first step there. Next up, go to print settings right next to the page setup button. And here you're just going to choose more specific settings uh, about your printer. So we're going to go ahead and choose our specific printer here. Again, my, uh, my Canon Pro Series. You can choose the amount of copies. You can choose the page numbers. You can choose all this stuff. Probably all of this stuff you're used to if you've printed from any printer in the, in the past whatsoever. So you can go to here to Media and Quality. You can choose how the paper is going to feed. I'm going to choose Manual Feed. You can choose the media type. You can choose whether it's printing on a just plain paper, photos, envelopes, whatever, go ahead and choose that. And I always print with the best quality possible. Obviously, you don't, want, you don't want to be printing with just normal quality. If you're printing a photo, print it the best you can. You can go here to Layout, and just like many other applications, you can choose how many pages per sheet you want. If you want two, fo two photos on the same sheet, you can go ahead and do that. You can even put 16 if you want to make more of a contact sheet. You can choose the order that those photos come out. You can choose your border. I never like having a border. I like to customize that myself. You can change the paper handling. And finally, cover page. So go ahead and hit save. And those are the boring technical details that you need to worry about. Now you just need to worry about making this photo look the best that you want it to look. So the first menu we're gonna open up is layout style. Right now we're printing a single image. So that's the one we're gonna select. If you want a picture package for clients, you can choose that, or if you want to more customize your settings, you can go into that. But I'm not going to go too much into detail, I'm just going to stick with the single image right now. Now I'm not going to go through every single one of these tabs because some of them don't really apply, and there's a lot to some of them. I'm really just going to go through the ones that are going to help you the most and allow you to print photos right off the bat. So next up we're going to go to Layout. Now this shows us things like our unit of our ruler as well as our margins, our grids, and our cell size. 
Now when it says cell size, basically what that means is the size of the photo in the paper. So I'll get back to that in a second. But margins here. I typically do not like to work with my margins, so I'm going to go ahead and set all those to as low as possible, which they seem to be. Now if I had them bigger, they'd do things like that, or if I had margins from the bottom or from the right, it would do that. But I'm going to take it all the way down as low as it can go so that the photo is in the center of the paper with no margins. Now, if you were trying to make more of a contact sheet and you needed more rows and columns with all those different photos that we selected earlier, go ahead and bump the, that up a little bit. And there you can fill in all the contact sheet with all the photos you have. You know, we only have, what, six photos, so we can go three by two. We can even go two by two and lose one. But we just want to print this one photo for now, so let's take them both down to one. So it's a one by one grid. Finally, the cell size or the size of the photo within the print. So we can take it down really, really low and make it a two inch print on an 11 by 14 inch piece of paper. But I think it would be really nice if we put our photo as an eight by 12 with a nice little border around the whole thing. That way we have a nice great white mat around the entire photo. It'll fit in an 11 by 14 frame, but the photo is perfectly set to an eight by 12 aspect ratio. And the final tab that we're gonna open up to make some settings is print job. And this is the final thing you're gonna do before you go ahead and you print your photo. So obviously you're printing to your printer. You're not gonna select your draft mode printing because that's we don't wanna be printing a lower quality print. You can adjust your print resolution if you'd like. How many uh, PPI, you can adjust that, make it bigger, make it smaller, depending on your personal preference. Again, just like our export settings, you can change the print sharpening. You can change it between low, standard, or high. I'm gonna stick with low because I don't want any of that changing. And then the media type, you can change it whether it's glossy or matte. I like printing on matte paper, so I'll go ahead and select that. And then you, you can go ahead and select 16-bit output if that so applies to you. Finally, you can change your color management. You can choose Manage by Printer, or you can click Other, and you can download and apply uh, different profiles for your, uh, for your prints. So for example, say you were printing with a special paper, and you wanted a color profile exactly for that specific paper, you can go ahead and change that. For example, if you were printing on a glossy paper, that's a much different surface than if you're printing on a canvas or a velvet paper or a fine art paper or something. So your colors are gonna slightly differ for each single paper that you print to. So make sure you download the profiles that you would like for your specific paper. Most companies will tell you exactly what profiles their paper uh, should be printed. But yeah, that's it. So here we have our final photo. And what's really cool, since we had five photos, five or six photos, I don't remember, since we had all of them selected when we entered the print module, we can click the arrow keys and you can see that we have all the photos here. Now obviously these are sideways, but it doesn't matter because once they print out, we can just rotate them. But look, it's awesome how we can just automatically make this adjustments for the print settings for this one photo and it can apply to all of them and they can all print exactly the same. So when you're all done, just go down here, hit the print button and watch your work come to life. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I know I walked through the printing pretty quick, but like I said, I showed you the settings and the adjustments that you'll need to make for the majority of prints that you will ever print. If you wanna make more specific adjustments, I suggest going and printing and stuff in applications like Photoshop. It's much more user-friendly and you have a lot more customizable settings. If you have any questions whatsoever about exporting or printing, leave them in the comments below. Like I said in, earlier in the video, I will answer every single one of the comments. I make that a big point too. But other than that, go ahead and hit that like button below if you enjoyed the video. If you enjoy my content and you wanna see more of it, hit the subscribe button for more videos. And yeah, thanks for tuning in everybody. I hope all of you have a fantastic day and I wish you all the best of luck with importing, editing, and exporting all of your images. Thank you all so much for tuning into Lightroom 101. I'm sad to see the series come to an end, but I'm excited to see all of your feedback for it. So thanks again for tuning in and all of you have a fantastic day.